Welcome to an American Homestead, podcasting live from deep within the Ozark Mountains at an elevation of 2,200 feet. It's 9 p.m. Central, 10 Eastern. Uh, it's good to be back and uh, got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Jamie's with me and we're going to talk about mostly tonight uh, homesteading, alternative energy, the ups and downs of alternative energy uh, for our homestead. We've been doing this now for about three years and um, it's just something I feel like we can talk about and you know we got a variety of opinions on the topic because we've done it for now for for a few years and and so uh it's been almost four years <laughs> okay four years going on for yeah four years not quite so um i um, just got a lot of opinions i know a lot of people are still jumping over from deep south homestead and got to uh, listen to uh most of that show just kind of on the sidelines while i was getting my own stuff set up and um uh listen to the gardening stuff we have, um, let's see, what do we do this week? We canned some more salsa. Yeah, lots more salsa. Yeah, we did um, a whole bunch of jars and uh, the mo- uh, the maple syrup evaporator. It uh, really does help us to do a lot of jars, water bath, water, water bath jars at once. Yeah. And so um, uh, that, that's really, it's been, really been a benefit so far of having that evaporator. And I did a review on that, a review video on that that's going to be coming up on YouTube here shortly at some point, uh, probably in the next week. Um, let's see, uh, what else we do this week? Oh, I don't know. I Zach, Zach always asks me that question and I always say, I don't know. I just did my normal stuff, <laughs> <laughs> which to me, my normal stuff is, you know, taking care of the house, taking care of the kids, doing the laundry, doing the cooking, you know, just, you know, the normal life stuff <laughs> that takes a while, <laughs> fills your day. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I did some grass cutting. Uh, got caught up on some grass. My my mowers have been going down, off and on. I, there was at one point where I, all I had was just the weed whacker still in operation. I had to cut a bunch of grass with the weed whacker, and so um, finally got that. Uh, got the the our, we have a a push mower that's um, self propelled. That's got that back up and running. But tomorrow. Big addition on the homestead. We have a friend of ours who's coming from Oklahoma, and he's bringing with him a zero turn, 54-inch deck, commercial zero turn, and uh, we're going to trade for that for some lumber off the sawmill. So I'm going to be able to have uh, a real nice way to cut um, the grass on the homestead and just make it look just so much better and it's in, in, in such a small amount of time. So we're really looking forward to getting that zero turn uh, from our friends who are coming tomorrow. And so uh, there's an event uh, going on in, in the neighborhood tomorrow, and we're gonna, we're, a bunch of people are getting together uh, in the evening, and, we're, and they're coming over for that. And so it's just going to be a good time, and they're going to drop off. So woohoo, we get a zero turn. Yeah, and then uh, in the morning, well... No, later in the afternoon, we get to take stuff to the fair. Mm-hmm. So we're going to put in our entries. Yep, the county fair is starting, technically starts Monday, but the entries uh, have to be complete by tomorrow afternoon. So Jamie has a few already, you know, pulled aside canning items. What do you, what do you got? Oh, I'm just doing potatoes. I've got tomatoes. I think three different ways. Tomatoes. I've got stewed tomatoes. I've got salsa. And then I've got spaghetti sauce. And uh, let's see. Peaches, jam, pickles. Two ways. I've got bread and butter pickles and dill pickles. Uh, did I say potatoes? Yep, said so potatoes. Um, I'll take some venison and then probably some canned chicken um what else are we gonna take i have some garlic that i'm gonna be taking from the garlic we harvested and we have some a number of we have a uh one of our big squash we harvested last year um and uh it's because you have to it's basically you can't bring in anything you've harvested in the past you have to bring it in you know from the time the fair ends until the time the fair starts in the following year and so anything during that time you can bring and so i have one that i harvested in late fall uh, for these gigantic squash that we have, we're going to enter that in the fair. And then some other things I'm going to pull out from the garden and, and uh, bring that in as well. So let's all check in for the county fair is tomorrow. It starts Monday. And, of course, we'll be putting out videos on all of the great things we'll be seeing at the fair and uh, hopefully uh, being able to maybe attend some of the events. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see where all we can go and, and see. But that's what's going on. I mean, we've got the county fairs in full swing, and uh, we're getting ready to do that. Uh, my son, my nine-year-old, has put together a Lego town 
Um, he's going to enter that into the fair. Um, people uh, enter all kinds of Lego projects. So. <laughs> well, he saw so many last year that <laughs> that was all he could think of all year was what to build of Lego to take. Yeah, so <laughs> we're gonna—he's going to be entering a Lego, and so you can you can basically for the count, most county fairs are like this, folks. You can just enter in everything. You pick up a county fair book; they issue those a few months before the fair, and gives you all the different categories of things you can enter into for judging at the fair and if you win a ribbon you win a small amount of money uh, they give you you know a dollar two dollars or whatever mm-hmm. you know if you get a, if you get a grand champion in your category um, not all categories are eligible for a grand champion or best of show but if you get a grand champion or a best of show or even a reserve champion ribbon um, that comes with a little bit more money i think the the most we got for a ribbon last year was ten dollars i think that was the best right. of show well it also depends and we we got a really good education in how this works last year but it also depends how each category is funded i know that they get private funding um, to distribute among some of the different categories really in our neck of the woods they just want people to enter they just want to <laughs> have stuff to put out on the shelves they want to show people that, <laughs> that it's, it's, it's a place, something fun to do. Yeah, they want people to get involved. And, that, and, and last year, I think, was a little bit, you know, the first year we did it, there was a lot more people who participated. And I think last year we had such huge rains at the beginning, there was a lot less people who participated in the gardening stuff um, for the county fair because – uh, there was so much rot, so much, you know, you know, diseases that came up because of all the water uh, that people just didn't have a lot of success in the garden last year. Um, although we, you know, we had really good success, uh, just not everybody did. So anyway, that's coming up this week. We have that going. Um, our, as far as our garden is going, we have basically finished a lot of the things we're going to be doing. We may get one more um, canning of salsa in it kind of feels weird because I feel like the summer is so busy with the garden and then the preserving and then, you know, I turn around and it's halfway through August and I think, wow, okay, we're almost done for another year. And it really, I yeah. mean, we have a lot of stuff, more stuff to do, but like the big, you know, push is winding up for the year. Yeah. So Exactly. You know, you wait for your whole year and you prepare the whole year for this one thing that's going to put up all your food for the rest of the year. And it's over fast um, and it, it goes by really quick. So we've got most of our tomatoes in. Um, we've got all of our pickles in. We're done doing pickles. In fact, somebody came over and wanted to harvest some pickles this week. Uh, one of our neighbors. Cucumbers. And, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Cucumbers. <laughs> pickles. Yeah. Pickles on the vine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so our cucumbers on the vine, and they were like, yeah, they're all basically done. I said, yeah, we let them just – see, when you stop picking cucumbers, they get really big and yellow, and they just don't produce anymore um, if you stop picking them. And uh, we stopped picking them because we were done canning. We canned all the ones we were going to get. We and- had so – I mean, we gave boxes and boxes and boxes of cucumbers away, and I canned a lot. I mean, I have, oh, I don't know, probably 50 jars of pickles that I did this year. So, you know, the pickles are done, beans are done, tomatoes are almost done. Um, We have still melons to harvest. There's some melons out there we can harvest. We're still harvesting some peppers, um, and we'll eat eat on those as we go. Uh, Obviously, the Jerusalem artichokes won't be ready until the late fall. Uh, We also have some sugar cane, a sugar cane patch in the garden this year, and it's doing amazingly well. It's so tall, and uh, so we won't harvest that until later. the achachas are doing good. They're basically covering the um, the arbor that's out there, and uh, you know our our little uh, herb garden is doing good with the papalo and uh, the basil. She had me mm-hmm. harvest some basil. Um, yeah, I made some delicious pesto chicken this weekend. It yeah. was so yummy. So uh, the ba- you know, there's still a lot of things growing out there, but you know, we're kind of winding down because we've our our, our pantries are getting full up. I mean, there's. It won't be completely full until we start doing the deer. I mean, yeah, for the fall. Yeah, we're we're gonna do a lot of it. Yeah. So, we'll, I told him I have to can more of it this year. He took a lot of the deer and put it into salami. Yeah. We're, last we're, year we'll do that again, but you know we'll we'll can a, a good amount too. Probably half. Uh, we'll can. Um, but the salami turned out excellent. We're gonna be doing a video update on all of uh, the meat preservation we did, and uh, talk about that some more, folks. If you have wanted to 
figure out how people 100 years ago, 200 years ago and beyond preserved their meat, this is, you know, up your alley. This will this will help you and give you an education. We did it. And so far, I haven't died from many diseases or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been eating it. And so. Uh, oh, I, that reminds me. I think it was this week. It must have been this week. Anyway, um, you pro- any canners out there are probably familiar with Simply Canning. It's a really popular website for beginners especially. And I've used a lot of her information to help me can, although I take that and kind of translate it to doing it on a fire. Well, if you go to our website, you'll find information about canning with a fire. Well, we've always done our pressure canning with a fire. I've actually never even canned, pressure canned on a regular stove. I can't believe I'm actually, yeah, I've never pressure canned on a regular stove. I've always used a fire. Okay, so Simply Canning posted that article on her Facebook page which I thought was really cool. She was excited that to find someone that was actually trying to pressure can on a fire and doing it. Anyway, there were a lot of comments like people who didn't really believe it was possible. And that kind of stunned me because they weren't willing to accept that this was something that was actually okay to do. And I felt some of the comments were hilarious, but, um, they said the the most hilarious one to me was somebody who said that um, this is not safe practice. You shouldn't do this. But then they said, oh, well, if you look at these folks, they're doing a lot of things that are scientifically proven to be unsafe. And that kind of makes <laughs> me laugh because I think, OK, well, we're still alive. <laughs> We've been preserving our I mean, meat. they say, you know, drinking raw milk is unsafe, but, you know. People have been doing that for thousands of years, and, and you know the whole meat preservation is it, it's fine if you know what you're doing and you do it right. Uh, there's there's uh, there's always a danger, but uh, it's very minimal if you're doing it right. Um, and today, you know, there's all kinds of chemicals you can you can introduce into your meat preservation to make sure that it's right. But I wanted to go back and see you know what they did before some of these other uh, prepackaged chemicals, um, and it was the same thing. I mean, you're just using nitrites. Uh, to preserve your meat, just naturally, yeah. natural nitrites, from, you know, from plants. And, and it's the same thing. But anyway, well, we'll, but do an, we'll do an update on that. I'm just reading the comments. I'm actually talking about pressure canning, not water bath. I know that that a lot of people do water bath over the fire. But we actually do, we do pressure canning as well, which I've never seen anyone else do. There's been a, we, what we got the idea of was one, one blogger, he did over a thousand jars a year. Uh, pressure canning over a fire but other than that before we started doing it we couldn't find hardly anyone doing it and uh, now we've been doing it for three years and and it's working very very well um let's see what else do i have on my list here um um, on on some of our tomatoes we've got an attack of it seems like a late attack on uh, our tomatoes with a number of beetles and, um, you know, it's okay. It's at the end of the season anyway, so I really don't care about weeds. I don't care about bug attacks. If they attack, fine. Uh, but by this time of the year, I'm, I'm well on my way of finishing up um, my harvest, and Jamie's finishing her canning. So um, I don't know if you guys are getting any bug attacks right now, but we sure are. And um, the sorghum. Sorghum is, I mean, I cannot believe we've been getting so much rain. The sorghum has, is well above my head. It's, it's just shooting up like a rocket. Uh, folks, we're going to have sorghum syrup this year on the homestead. Uh, we're going to go, I don't know, probably harvest that sometime uh, October uh, before the first frost. And, uh, and we're going to use the uh, evaporator to go ahead and uh, boil that down. And we have our new sorghum machine that we're going to be pressing the sorghum with to, you know, get the juice. And I think we may, I mean, we're going to, I mean, we're going to, it's all going to be a giant experiment, but I think we're, you know, we're going to get it all on video so we can share it with people. And a lot of people have been asking us for a video on, um, you know, who is, who did we get our juicer from, the sorghum juicer, and it's from a company called Tubo Biz. And um, I'll make sure to put that in, um, uh, in the description below, but it's called Tubo Biz. And it's run by an Austrian, a European Austrian, uh, who went down to the Philippines and then to Vietnam, I believe, and uh, he has uh, developed a, 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 a sorghum or actually a sugarcane machine. 
that presses and works like um, works for sorghum as well as sugarcane. And so we got one of those. It was kind of expensive. I'll go into all that in the video, but uh, um, it's it's way way more efficient than you know the horse drawn uh, machines that you see you know of yesteryear. So uh, definitely a lot more efficient than that. You you should get at least about fifty percent more efficiency out of one of these machines. And when when the cane comes out on the other side, it's dry. It's completely and totally dry. So anyway. Um, we're getting a zero turn tomorrow. I'm excited about that. And uh, the sorghum's growing good. Life is good on the homestead. You know, so I'm pretty, everything's pretty good. The weather has been really nice. Yeah, we're getting My lots goodness. of rain. Rain is good. So tonight I want to talk about alternative energy. And um, this is something that I know it's just, it's just um, you know, people have a lot of opinions about solar and wind energy production. And now we've now that we've been doing it for three years, we definitely wanted to talk about it and just give people an idea of the ups and downs of it and, you know, where I come at on this because I have some strong opinions on it. And, you know, it's 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 a very expensive thing to venture into and, and try to and try to, um, you know, incorporate into your homestead, into your lifestyle. It's definitely an upfront cost. And, you know, I don't know. You want to talk about how you just prefer to do without, or I mean, we like we like having the ability. I mean, we wouldn't be able to talk to you tonight if we didn't have solar power and a battery bank. But I think that I don't know because because I have mixed feelings about it too. But I think that I'm really really grateful that we went without it for so long. We worked the solar in um, probably. I think a year off grid, we worked the solar in and mm -hmm. then we just added to it as time went on and we didn't have it in the house for a really, really long time. Pr probably what? It's just been this last year we got it in yeah, the house. Yeah, it's only been this last year. And it's funny because I'm so used to doing without it that it doesn't even occur to me that I can plug something in. Really, the only thing I ever plug in is the computer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's what we usually use it for is just uh, charge the cell phone that we use to to do all of our videos. Folks, people ask, what kind of camera do you use? I just use a Galaxy, a Samsung Galaxy, uh, no, it's a Samsung Note 5. Is it the Galaxy Note 5? Whatever it is. But it's a phone, basically, and it's got a really, it's got a very good 4K video camera on it, and that's what we record all of our videos with is just a phone. And I charge that phone uh, we don't even have cell service out here, so the only re reason I use that phone is for recording videos, and um, and that's that's kind of about it. And then we charge it here inside the house, um, and we use our laptops inside the house. The kids, uh, my oldest has a laptop; he uses that now for school, and um, you know, that's what we use the majority of our our solar power for. But uh, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I it's worth having. I'm very glad we have the solar power. The problem is there's a, there's ups and downs with having alternative energy, and that's kind of what I wanted to get into tonight is share some of these things with you. There's a number of articles you can find online, and I'll post them in the description below after the video is over, after we're done talking tonight. YouTube will process um, the uh, video, and then I'll, you know, you'll see that in the description below all the articles that we're going to talk about. The first one's from pureenergies.com, and it's called The Pros of Solar Energy. And obviously the first thing they, they mention is it helps the environment. And I'm not so much worried about that as I am worried about being sufficient, self-sufficient, and having free energy. It's about really, for me, it's building my own grid and, and building, you know, using the electricity. Because I want to have electricity. I wouldn't be able to do the things I do uh, and keep in contact with all of you guys if I didn't have this energy. And so um, that's really my main focus. Um, once the initial expense is paid on on your your alternative energy solution, whatever it may be, uh, you know, and solar if solar panels is that is that option, it, you really have free energy. I mean, you're you're they do last a, a good amount of time, um, even though there is upkeep and maintenance. You know, even though it's sometimes maybe a little, but it, it's it's free energy. You've you've built your own grid, your own electrical grid on your homestead, and that's definitely a pro. Um, I'm trying to think, they're quiet. They don't have moving parts. They don't. It, they're not loud like a generator is. Um, and they it says here they promote energy independence, which is absolutely true. Folks, it's so nice to not have an electric bill. I don't I haven't had an electric bill in 
you know, well, four, going on four years, four years, almost. So, I mean, I mean, we, people are paying three hundred, four hundred dollars a month for their electric bill in the in the summer and winter. Uh, you know, it, it's cost a lot of money to heat a ho- to heat a home, and uh, you know, I, I don't have those bills. I you know, I heat with a wood stove, and the power that I have to to power my laptops and things like that, I I, I use you know, I create the, all that energy by collecting it from the sun. But if you think about it. The cons of, of solar energy, you know, the downfall is that it's a major investment. It's a huge investment. They're expensive. I mean, they are, they are not cheap and good ones. I mean, not all solar panels are made the same. Not all solar panels are equal. You, uh, we purchased ours from uh, a, a brand called Grape Solar, and they were offered by Home Depot. And I went to the Home Depot website and looked at their reviews, and the reviews were absolutely outstanding for grape solar panels and other solar other places where you can find grape solar panels online the reviews were outstanding and so when i buy something like this it's going to be a major investment i want to see what other people are saying about it and i mean grape solar is a great company they 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 produce good products but um you know they are they are expensive folks if you buy your solar panels from harbor freight let me just tell you, you you're 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 not really making an investment. You're, you're, you're buying crap. You're buying garbage. You know, Harbor Freight, there are some really good things you can buy at Harbor Freight. And, you know, you buy the warranty thing that goes with it because it's probably going to break at some point. You don't want to buy your solar panels from Harbor Freight. You know, if you want to buy a, a, a concrete mixer, buy it at Harbor Freight. Because if it breaks, you can take it back. But solar panels are a little bit harder. Um, if something ever did go wrong with these solar panels, knowing that I got it from a, from a Home Depot company, it's Home Depot, I can always take it back to a Home Depot. You know, they ship it to you in a crate, um, and you have the option of either picking it up at the store or having it delivered to your home. But at the same time, if something shows up damaged, and one time it did, one of our sets of solar panels that came in, one was broken. And so instead of you know packaging the crate back up and getting it all perfect to send back, all we had to do was take it to Home Depot and they ordered us a new one, easy, easy peasy, and so that that was that was that was good. Uh, but um, you know, it's, it's an investment. There can be a lot of you know hoops you gotta jump through to make sure you get the right ones. And uh, folks, I really encourage you guys to go out and do your research, find a good, credible company to order your your equipment from. The other con is solar panels don't work 24 hours a day. Uh, they work when the sun's up. And if the sun doesn't come up that day, it doesn't work. And what I mean by that is if what if you have cloud cover for two, three, four days? What if you have cloud cover for five or six days? There's been times where we've had cloud cover and no sun for five or six days. And you're not, you're not charging your batteries. So you better have a solution for that. Because if you're not charging your batteries, you can't be discharging your batteries. Because if you do, you're going to kill your batteries. So that limits you to, you know, you know, the ability to run off your, off your, off your, um, off your grid, you know, that you've made. Uh, there's, we've had to, as an alternative, we have a generator that's a backup, and we run that generator with a battery, a three-stage battery charger, and uh, uh, when we have days with very little sunshine, we will go out there and we will start the generator, turn on the battery charger, and it keeps the batteries. Uh, charged up to where they need to be your battery bank is the most important part of your of your grid i mean that's that, you know a friend of mine once told me and i've said this before on videos is that most batteries don't die they're murdered they're murdered because someone charged them overcharged them and that that'll kill a battery really quick or someone has discharged them to the point where they can't be recovered and and that's so so true. And so you got to be careful. You, when you have a, a battery bank, when you have a grid, you need to maintain that constantly to make sure uh, that you're not going to hurt um, your grid and your battery bank. So there's some. I'll post that article up. There's another article. It's over at alternativeenergy.org, uh, and um, I'll post that link as well. And it goes through a number of pros and cons. Some of them are I don't really get into. You know, oh, it's reduced oil drilling. It means less. You know you know, less, you know, damage to the earth and blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm like, folks, do you know how much energy it takes to make those solar panels? It's a lot of energy. So don't pretend that you're saving the earth by buying solar panels. There is so much, you know, energy that goes into, and, and resources, uh, natural resources that go into, and we'll talk about that in a minute, that go into building these solar panels and these batteries and all this other stuff. 
that if you're using the excuse that it's there to save the planet, you're kind of lying to yourself or you've been lied to about it. So um, number two, it's green jobs for an economic recovery. Again, save the planet. Uh, you know, okay, you know, here's the deal. Let's just get into this for a second. Do you want to know the reason? I mean, when, when Obama first took office, when Obama first took office, he was starting all of these alternative energy companies, solar panel companies and wind power companies and blah, blah, blah. Folks, do you know the reason why most of those companies, if you don't know, have gone out of business? They, they basically got some angel investing, some startup money, and, and they all went bankrupt, most of them. The reason is, is because this stuff is expensive to make. But, you know, if, if you think about it, why don't you see solar energy, solar panels, and things like that being sold in Walmart? Well, the reason is because most people who shop at Walmart are idiots. I mean, that it's average Joe, Sm Joe Schmo, six-pack American who's watching Monday Night Football, and you know he, you know, all he wants to see is his TV football game, and 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 that's the kind of person who shops at Walmart. And I shop. We have to shop at Walmart too. I'm not saying you know. Sometimes we go to Walmart, but I'm just saying that the average, you know, you can't make something that the lowest common denominator of the public can't use. There's no such thing as an alternative energy plug and play system. There just isn't. Not for a house. I mean, you can find some of these camping gears. Where, you know, where they, they uh, you know, you put it on wheels and you, you drag it out of your car and it's got a little solar panel attached to it and you can plug your cell phone into it. Yeah, okay, that's kind of plug and play. It's all one system that's, in, you know, built in, one of those uh, zero things, or goal zero um, pieces of equipment. But, you know, think about it. You know, when you hook up a solar system, an alternative energy system to your house, it requires a little bit of intelligence. And let's just face it. A lot of the people who shop at Walmart just don't have that level of intelligence. And so you're trying to start up a bunch of companies that are going to provide solar energy and renewable energy that can be consumed by regular Americans who are stupid, who can't, you know, all they care about is their Monday night football. You know, it's not going to sell. When you hook up a solar energy package, it's, it, it requires some intelligence and some know-how. There's electrical wiring that goes into that that you have to take into account. And what's the worst that can happen when you hook up one of these systems? Well, the worst that could happen would, you know, you can kill yourself. You can electrocute yourself. But that's the absolute worst that can happen. But that's what could happen. And Walmart and some of these other big box stores are not going to put solar energy uh, packages on their shelves if Joe Schmo's six pack is going to walk in, buy it, go home, say, say to one of his buddies, here, hold my beer, watch this while I plug this in and electrocute himself because he, they're going to have lawsuits on their hands. You can't put these things in, you know, these nice little packages inside Walmart. You just can't. Um, you can buy some of these things online, like Home Depot sells them online on their website. But you cannot just sell these to the public because it takes know-how and that's one of the reasons it's so expensive because you have to hire somebody usually unless you do the research uh, uh, to, to do it yourself. And that's what we did. We just did the research. We took our time. We found, we found out what we had to do and we put, together our, put, put it together ourselves. Um, and that saves time and, you know, time and money. But you think about these. Look at one of these solar panels. Let me just Google this real quick because I, I was going to do this before the show. How much silver is in a solar panel? You have people selling. What? <laughs> you have people. She's on... watching the chat. I'm just <laughs> ranting. What are you saying? Zach likes to rant. <laughs> um, this one person. Oh, maybe it went past. Somebody says, well, you would be calling a few people. Yeah, that's one way to put some bleach in the gene pool is by selling solar panels over at Walmart. Because, you know... You'd kind of electrocute yourself, right? Well, some of them would. <laughs> well, hey, you know, you guys, we shop at Walmart, too. We live in a really small town. Yeah. And <laughs> if we want to drive an hour and a half, no, maybe a little a bit less, to get to other stores, we can. But the closest store is Walmart, and even that's half an hour away. So, yeah, that's what we have. Yeah. So, um, I'm looking this up, and... Uh... 
let's see. Oh, here, here it's really going slow. It's because uh, we're we're streaming. Um, one second here. I've got I've got I've got it right here. I think it's like 80 metric tons of silver. Anyway, it's very expensive to make a solar panel. I mean, there's lots of, I'm not talking about just the photo, the, the PV cells and, 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 and the other stuff too that goes into manufacturing this. Uh, this is from an article, it doesn't say when it was published. It says, for every gigawatt of solar power installed, 80 metric tons of silver is required. Because when you look at a, a solar panel, all those silver lines, that's all silver. That's actually real pure silver that they're using because silver and gold are the best uh, conductors of electricity. You take apart a laptop and you look at all of the connections between your memory, your memory cards and your video cards. It's all gold plated because that is the best conductor of electricity you're going to get with gold and silver. And solar panels are expensive. But you think how much it costs, you know, what's, a, what's an ounce of silver cost today? 20 bucks. But that's just bullion. And you take that one ounce of bullion silver and then remanufacture that into a usable form that can be used inside of a solar panel, that's extra manufacturing cost for that bullion of silver because that's how it comes out of the ground. It comes out in bricks. And then you have to take those bricks, manufacture that, melt them down, and then spool them into wires or into ways where you can melt them down for the photovolactic panels. Uh, the solar panel. So it's very, very expensive and it demands a, a major amount of resources, natural resources from the earth. Folks, it's very expensive. You, you don't get, I, you know, and people have made this point before. I don't think as much as I love our solar system and our, our alternative energy system, it's just, you just don't get the amount of return energy uh, from solar that it costs to make the actual panel and the equipment that you're buying, the, the, you know, the batteries, you know, the charge controller, which is all electronics, uh, if, if you get a good one at least, a good charge controller, you know, run you 800 bucks. So, uh, I mean, it's, stuff, it's very expensive, it's very resource heavy, and, you know, according to this article, and I'll post this one as well, it's for every gigawatt of solar power installed, 80 metric tons of silver is required. That is unbelievable unbelievable in my opinion so anyway um you know i, I just don't think what, what were you gonna say oh i'm I was just gonna say so the point that i've always made we've always made is that if you want a certain amount of energy you <laughs> you should and if you have access to the grid you should just plug in it's not it's not worth it to invest in solar if number one you have access to the grid already and it's easy for you yeah it's I mean, I mean if it's easy for you if it's right there you know and you're on a you're on a house you've already purchased a house that has electric in it i mean going on a grid tie system man that's that's a that's a investment i would i just wouldn't do plus you know it's it's a lot <coughs> it's a lot of extra work if you want that solar i guess you know it's up to you i I think, and I'll just reiterate, I just think it's worth learning to live without it. Yeah. I think that that has it's been the best thing for us to go. With, we went without it for a year, and we really, really figured out what, honestly, our needs were. And our needs were basically run our office equipment because we can't run our business. We can't run a homestead business without computer and without phone and internet and don't get me wrong I, I don't want to tell you folks that you shouldn't get solar if you if you're if you want to go to a place where you can live off grid and you're out kind of in a very rural area um i really believe the solar is worth the investment however there's a lot of cons you know you know you know just along with the, the with the pros of having the system and that is you know you need to know what you're doing if you're going to save the money by installing it yourself uh you know, do that, do the research to, to do that. We've got articles on our website to show you how to do it, um, to give you a leg up on some of this research that we did um, in, a, in a kind of a compartmentalized fashion. And, and, and I'll put those articles in the description below as well. I'm not telling you not to get solar. I'm just saying that if you're going to get it, understand that there's cons with it. It's expensive. It's a huge upfront investment. And there are, you know, I just don't see how it's, um, it's not, it's not this, nirvana that some people paint it out to be that's all i'm saying you know yeah now 
wind, wind is completely different. I mean, wind power, and 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 I think it has wind power has it has actually more cons um, than than solar does, uh, and I'll explain. We have had wind. We have, we got with two wind turbines on the homestead, and wind works really good. This is one of the pros. Wind works really good with when you have it tied into a, to a solar system. And, uh, you know, it does really dip on those days when, you know, especially in the wintertime when the wind is picking up and there's cloud cover in the wintertime, it really does a great job of putting a trickle charge on your on your batteries. And especially on days when, you know, there's a little bit of sun, a little bit of sun and wind. I mean, it just works outstanding that way. But here's the cons to having the biggest con to having a wind turbine is lightning. The first year we put it up. It worked great all winter and it was working wonderfully. Did a great job of keeping our batteries charged. We definitely noticed a, a, an improvement um, with our wind turbines. But when spring came, boom, lightning. And the first spring came and we had a lightning bolt strike one of our turbines and blew both our turbines. It blew uh, an inverter and it blew one of our sheep um uh, uh, we have an electric, electric fence, and it blew one of our sheep, uh, the chargers for the electric fence for the sheep. And, I mean, it was a very costly electrical outage, uh, you, know, a, you know, lightning strike. So, um, guys, I mean, we've lived in Florida before. When I went to, when we were, I was in college, and um, Florida is the lightning capital of the world. We don't have as much lightning as Florida gets, but, man, we get lightning here, and I'm telling you, you know, you, our, our poles aren't even that high, but we're on a mountaintop, so we get a lot of wind, and so it does good. But, man, it, I mean, we get lightning here. And, you know, is it, was it just a coincidence that our first year we had the, the turbines up that we got hit by lightning and both of them got, got, got uh, basically blown, blown up? I don't think that's a coincidence. So I think my only option to this is, is that, you know, maybe in the winter we haven't run up, but by the time the spring storms start up, we, we – we bring those poles down, um, and, and and just you know try to avoid that because I mean man it, it's a it was a costly uh, we had a um, the Primus Air Forty that's eight hundred dollar turbine that got fried and then um, the Wind uh, Blue turbine that was about a five hundred dollar turbine that got fried and I've got a replacement for the Wind Blue but I haven't put it up yet because I'm just, I'm, I'm going to maybe try to put it up before um, winter hits here but uh man i'm telling you it fried our our two turbines and that's a costly thing so if you live any place where there's well people are like, oh well you just need to you know ground your system better or you need to have lightning arresters folks there's a reason why none of these manufacturers of these wind turbines ensure or warranty their turbines against lightning strikes is because it doesn't matter if lightning strikes your turbine all bets are off there's no there's no lightning arrestor. There's no precautions you can take, you know, to to make your to guarantee that that lightning is going to not destroy your turbine. There was a professional um, a professional wind and energy company not far from where we live, and they have one of those giant gigantic turbines. You know, one of those big ones you see out in the desert in front of their building, and they were running it. And in the first year, guess what happened? Lightning. And this is a this is a, a power company. This is an alternative energy company. I'm not going to mention the name. And in the first year, their turbine got struck by lightning and was down. You know, and they did took. I don't know if they have it up and running again now, but as of two years ago, when I went by there, uh, it still wasn't running. So and it had been down already for a year. And so uh, you know, I I just don't see the benefit of wind energy unless you can take it down and put it up in the winter time. Uh, yeah, someone says old ways, new time says nothing is holding up to lightning. There's no way these manufacturers are going to warranty their equipment to lightning strikes. None of them do it. None of them. Because lightning is, there's no way to, to, to tell and predict where lightning is going to go and what it's going to damage along its way. Um, so, uh, you know, that's a serious problem out here. You may live somewhere where you have high wind and no lightning. Well, congrats on that. But where we're at on a mountaintop, we get lightning you know, every every year I think we've had lightning strikes nearby. Yeah, we get a lot. So uh, I mean, there's just you know when it, when you have wind and if you're gonna and our poles are I think are only 
I think only they're, they're less than 30. They're like 27 feet, 27 foot poles, which is not high at all for a wind turbine. And they still got hit. So, um, yeah, that is what it is. I'm not, I'm not sold on alternative energy. I think it's great. I think that it requires maintenance. And I think that um, because it requires maintenance, at some point, if the grid goes down and we're looking at a, a you know, a, a poop hits the fan type scenario, it's only a matter of time before your energy goes away. I mean, it's just that simple. You know, it's, a, it's nice to have and it does, I really appreciate using it and not having electric bills. Um, uh, you know, that, that's good, not having electric bills, but and I, I, I couldn't do this business with it, without it. I couldn't talk to you guys. I couldn't do my, I do web design on the side. I couldn't do web design and work remotely without it. But um, uh, at some point, you just, you just got to look at it and, and evaluate what, what is the value of this over time. And, um, um, you know, like I say, like anything, it has its pros and cons. The websites I'm going to refer you to, I'll put the ones we, we mentioned in the description below. If you're interested, again, I'm not poo-pooing having a, a, an electrical, having your own solar grid. I, I really think there's some benefits, and, and we will continue to use ours for sure. And if you want more information on how to connect yours, we have articles on our website. One is called Connecting Your Own Grid on an AmericanHomestead.com. That's our website. And it gives you all the information, gives you a rundown on what we have, gives you wiring diagrams. We provide those free of charge on our website, the wiring diagrams on how we have our system set up with our wind turbines uh, that are now not working. Um, but you can see how we have our system wired up. And whether you use solar or whatever, this will give you a good idea of how we have our system set up and how you can set it up as well. Um, and then it also has videos where we talk about our wind turbines and stuff like that. The other one is uh, an article I'll recommend on our website. It's called Five Things You Need for Solar Energy. And you can look up this article on our website at AmericanHomestead.com. And it goes through the five things you're going to need. Um, it's number one, solar panels, obviously. Uh, a combiner box, number two. A charge controller, number three. And someone in the comments earlier said Midnight Solar. Midnight Solar absolutely is the best company to buy for charge controllers. However, they are a little bit pricey. Um, but check them out. They are the best. I mean, there's no one who's doing it better than Midnight Solar. Uh, batteries, you need batteries, number four. Um, and then DC to AC inverter. you got to have an inverter if you're going to be using it for AC uh, electronics. So, uh, and it goes through all of those. And it also gives the wiring diagram without um, uh, the wind turbines on that article. So you can click on that solar panel uh, wiring diagram and blow it up into a bigger view and you can see very clearly everything is labeled on the diagram so you know exactly what we have and how we have it wired up. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is an amazing tool because if you have a battery bank, you understand that that is something that you need to baby. You need to make sure you take very, very good care of your battery bank. And the one thing that has saved our butts time and time again on our battery bank is what's called a battery lifesaver. And there are people in the industry that will tell you that the battery lifesaver is just a gimmick and it doesn't work. It's, it's just something that people are trying to, it's a rip off. But here's the deal, folks. Remember before when I told you to read the reviews on everything, read the reviews on products, read the, if you're going to make an investment like this, read the reviews, the battery lifesaver, it's a desulfator that will save your butt. It will. It'll, it'll do just a great job of, of preserving your batteries, giving them extra long life, making sure that you can recharge them when you need to recharge them. If they get a little bit low, uh, well below you know, the, the, the voltage that they ought to be, this is a great way to preserve your batteries. And what it does, it sends out pulses out into your battery bank to desulfate them. Every time you discharge a battery, meaning you use your battery, it puts little crystals on the plates that are inside that battery. And when your battery gets recharged, it turns those crystals back into electrolytes and then your battery is charged and ready to be used again. Well, every time you discharge a battery, it creates those crystals on those plates and you recharge the battery. Every time you recharge that battery, it fails to turn those crystals, at least some of them, back into electrolytes. So every time you're, the crystals are building up and building up and building up until you come to a point where you can't recharge your battery anymore. Well, this battery lifesaver 
actually goes after those crystals that don't get turned back into electrolytes, and it 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 uh, turns those back into electrolytes. It basically dissolves those crystals back into the solution that they need to go into. And and the reviews, I'm telling you, the reviews on these are absolutely outstanding. I'll also leave a, a link in the description of the battery uh, saver desulfator after the show is over. Uh, because if you have a system, if you have a system right now, I highly recommend you picking one of these up. Um, I have them on both. I have two battery banks, one for our uh, aquaponics and one battery bank for our house that we use for the electricity in the house. And I have battery lifesavers on both of them. And I can tell you without a doubt, these things work. So I'll leave a link in the description of that below. Do your own research on it. I think you'll find um, the, uh, the overwhelming evidence that uh, the battery lifesaver is worth the $100, uh, $115 that you're going to put into it. So... Um, other than that, we'll leave it open to uh, any comments. Uh, go ahead and if you have a question uh, you want to ask us, go ahead and put them in all caps in the chat room. We're looking at the chat room now. We'll, we'll give the last 15 minutes of the show over to your questions and any comments that you might have. Do you have anything you want to add? Um, no, because I haven't seen the comments. You had something else open. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to listen to uh, Deep South Homestead and um, before the show here and listening to a lot of the garden channels. A lot of the garden channels they, met, they mentioned I, I'm aware of. There's a lot of good channels out there. There's so many homestead channels out there now, folks. Uh, you really have no excuse to, uh, um, to not find information about homesteading. There's so many homestead channels, so many homestead blogs. Uh, multiple homestead networks and uh, the homestead network.com is is the part where we, we belong to and and there's just so many um uh good resources out there today where you can you know log into and and listen to and learn from and that's what we've been doing over the last few years um and so uh, that's that's where we get our are not wrangler stars one of my favorite although he doesn't do so much homesteading stuff nowadays he's He's kind of traveling the world. Uh, but there's so many other good homestead channels out there. Um, we all think of Wrangler Star because he's the, kind of the biggest. But um, I really liked MP, MHP Gardener. Um, that, I don't know if that was mentioned earlier by Deep South Homestead. He's kind of uh, uh, quit making videos, but the old videos are up and they're jam-packed with good information. Um what else? It's growingyourgreens.com when it comes to gardening is, you know, the end-all be-all of gardening channels, in my opinion, um, on YouTube. Uh, and so there's lots of other good homestead channels out there, and you learn a lot from other people. But uh, Growing Your Greens with John Kohler is, um, there's always the people who are at the top, you know, and we all want to be like those guys. Uh, everyone wants to, wants to be a Wrangler star, uh, but there's only one Wrangler star. So how long is my beard? It's long enough, Doug. How do we convince kids to break away from the world life? Oh, good luck with that one. If they're teenagers, you might be out of luck. Um, I think you have to get them young. Yeah. I, think you, I think you have to... <laughs> I mean, I think you just have to turn it off when they're young. Yeah, you know, we came out here with young kids. Um, our youngest has never known anything but this life. Our oldest uh, still remembers, but, I mean, we got rid of the TV a long time ago, and... Um, he remembers some video games, but we haven't allowed him to play video games in a long time. Yeah. When he, um, when the minions were big, I don't know, maybe the minions are still big and I don't know, but he had played a minion video game and I lost it. He literally ran around the house like a minion. He couldn't turn it off in his head. And I said, that's it. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Someone asked, you know, what kind of batteries we use. Uh, on our aquaponics, we use 6-volt. There's there's 8 of them. So 8 6-volt batteries, 24-volt configuration, and they're deep-cycle golf cart batteries we purchased at Sam's. So they were about 100 bucks a piece. So that was a pretty big investment, about 800 bucks. But they're just deep-cycle 6-volt um, lead-acid batteries, uh, golf cart batteries from... Uh, from Sam's. And then the ones that we use for the house here, uh, those are AGM batteries. Those were about $250 a piece. There were four of them. 
And they're also, they're 12 volt batteries, 105 amp hour, 105 amp hours. And they're each wired, they're wired up as a 24 volt configuration and they're AGM batteries. And I highly recommend if you can afford it to get AGM batteries, they are very uh, much, they're, they're worth it. They're gonna last you a long time and they're gonna be less maintenance, less trouble, um, and less forgi- I mean, very forgiving when you, when you abuse them. Um, there's been a couple of times where they've gotten kind of low and thank goodness again for that battery lifesaver. Uh, they, they do work, uh, you know, they, 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 there wasn't a problem. So, uh, they, they charged right back up. And so those AGM batteries are very forgiving and they're well worth the money you're going to spend on them. If you can use the AGMs, uh, if you can't, you can find cheap batteries at Sam's, the golf cart batteries, we use six volts and they are, um, both, both systems are 24 volt systems. And um, we use a six volt golf cart batteries from Sam's for the, for the, uh, for the greenhouse. <clears throat> Let's see, any other, what were the other ones? <clears throat> any other questions that I miss? Um, Do you use LED lights? Um, we use LED headlamps. I think it would be cool to put an LED light in the bathroom because the bathroom is the darkest room in our house. We don't really have a good window in the bathroom. <laughs> so that would be really cool to put an LED in the bathroom. And we've talked about that. Yeah, you, you, we have to wire it up, I, I think, for that. And we're not ready to do that yet. So um, at some point. What about marine batteries, Annette asked. And marine batteries are fine. You know, any battery, you, you can use any battery for solar that's a deep cycle battery. You just don't want to use car batteries. They're not going to work. You're just going to kill them. Um, you, need, you need deep cycle batteries and Again, you can use some of the stuff you find at the store, marine batteries, golf cart batteries, but it really makes a difference in the long run because you're making a long-term investment. Go ahead, if you can, spend the money on AGMs or some really good uh, Trojan deep cycle batteries or some of these battery companies that are made for solar panel or solar alternative energy use. Um, marine batteries are made for, you know, boat, boats. I mean, if you go out and buy a marine, it's like buying something that, I mean, it'll work. It's a deep cycle battery, but, you know, it's not really meant for that. She said, love the video on poison oak and ivy. Learned a lot. So anyway, um, yeah, find, use the right tool for, um, you know, for the job. The deep cycles, you know. Jay Rayner says marine batteries won't last. You know, probably true. I mean, they'll work for a time if they're deep cycle marine batteries. But uh, you want to find batteries that are going to be good, good used for uh, solar applications. And uh, again, like I said, save your money if you have to buy the uh, buy the AGMs. Buy the AGMs. <clears throat> People are excited for back to school, and I admit being one of them. Jamie, how do you handle the kids twenty four seven? I saw a meme the other day, and it was uh, it was a back to school meme on Facebook, and it was saying something to the effect that. Um, oh, what was it? <laughs> it was something I've like, never sent my kids to school, so I don't know what it means to have a break from them. Although, I don't know. I mean, I think any other homeschool parent would say the same, is that they live life with you, so they're used to life. And my oldest helps out a lot. I mean, we put him to work. <laughs> so he's not only doing school, he's actually doing work. I don't, yeah. honestly, I don't know what I would do without him. I need him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, um, here's the meme that, that, was, that I was talking about. It says, um, people always ask homeschoolers, how can you stand being with your parents all day? And it says, what if homeschoolers asked, how come your parents don't like to be with you all day? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, honestly, it's nice to have a break from your kids every now and then. And it's funny because we've we do school year round, so we never really stop. Although this last week we got started a lot heavier um, with school than we have been doing. And Joshua got a laptop, so he's doing a lot more on the laptop now. He's working on Arduino. He's um, doing. Um, he's learning how to type. He's doing a typing program. Um, some different things. And so it's been hard for the three-year-old to get used to Joshua getting back to school more. So that's probably the biggest demand is, is for me to figure out how to get the three-year-old to get used to Big Brother not being able to play. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it looks like there. I guess our, our stream went down for a little bit, and so some people are asking are back on. So sorry we lost you all. You guys are going to have to come back, and all of the show will be captured. You can come back and listen to it later if you want to. Um, but yeah, uh, that's really where we're at on solar energy. And um, our well, yeah, I forgot to mention Creation Crate because uh, we got our first Creation Crate box in the mail this week, and we're going to do an unboxing for the Creation Crate, and uh, we're going to show you guys the project that Josh was going to do. And I really highly recommend if you're a homeschool mom or dad, uh, get your kids involved in Creation Crate and C Sharp. It's a really great way to gear them for electronics, and they'll have a great time doing it. It's very hands-on. The, the kids are going to love it. Um, I'm going to be posting some, we're, we're going to become an affiliate for Creation Crate and help promote that online. And uh, so if you do decide to go ahead and sign up with creationcrate.com, we'll get a little bit of a kickback. But wait until we post the video coming up soon of the unboxing, and we'll give you the link you can go to. Because I really, I mean, I really, you guys, if you guys are homeschoolers out there, you're going to enjoy this. Your kids are going to love this. And uh, I think it's Arduino is something that, I, you know, kids today will just love getting into. And it really does uh, help gear them for different things, you know, later on. It gears their mind for uh, more advanced concepts, learning concepts, and, and things like that that they'll use throughout life. Mm. So, Somebody said they bring outdoor solar lights inside. Yes, we do that too. Those work really well. Yeah, we bring... They're not really super bright, but um, they work. Yeah, it allows us to sleep, see what we're doing. Someone on here said they have insomnia. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I hate it when I can't sleep. But honestly, since we moved off grid, I have a lot less insomnia. Without electric light, um, I'm able, it, my brain shuts down when it's dark. And I'm able to go to sleep a lot better when I haven't had lights on around me in the evening. Yep, yep. So, um, folks who are still in the chat room, we're about to sign off here, but I wanted to ask you a question before we start the music, and that is, um, do you guys, are, are you guys able to hear us very clearly during the whole show? Is it breaking up a lot? Um, you know, the, the, the fact is, we just don't have really great internet. We really are in the middle of nowhere, folks, and, um, you know, we're just, uh, we don't have a lot of internet. It was just, that's just it. So, I'm wondering... And, you know, this was kind of a test the last few weeks to see if this would work. And I'm wondering if you guys are able to actually listen to us. You know, do you, are we breaking up all the time or is it clear? Yes, we hear you fine. Breaking up a little. Yes, I hear you very clearly. Sound is great. But clear when not buffering. You're good. It's very clear. I was able to hear you until I quit streaming. Okay, not sure what the, I mean, we're on, we are at the end of the DSL line we really are. It's amazing. It's a, it's a miracle that we have DSL out here uh, to begin with. So, um, you know, we're just blessed to be able to have that. So you have any uh, final thoughts of what's going on? Well, just keep plugging away and Homestead's a lot of work. <laughs> but I think it's really rewarding work. I can't imagine doing anything else, honestly, because... There, I've had my ups and downs, and I think we've all had our ups and downs. Um, and when I'm hot and I'm sweating, I mean, literally, honestly, the sweat pours off of me. And I'm working all day, and I'm putting up all of the produce, and I'm thinking, okay, well, but what else better could I be doing with my time? I'm using something that we grew that our Heavenly Father provided ground to be able to grow. And I'm putting it up so that we can pull it out in the middle of winter when the ground is frozen over. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, guys, we'll be back next week. Uh, we got lots of good topics coming and lots of good things to talk about. So really glad everyone stuck with us. I know we had some playback issues uh, early in the evening, so thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you again next week. 9 p.m. Central, 10 Eastern, here on American Homestead, deep within the Ozark Mountains. See you next week, guys.